figured we'd take this opportunity to have a little chat about DACs. What makes a good DAC? What the differences are between a good DAC and a bad DAC? Oh, that kind of reminds me of a movie. Oh, yeah? Which one's that? Are you a good witch or a bad oh, witch? <laughs> a class like that, but about DACs. Uh, good DACs or bad DACs, huh? So yeah. for the uninitiated, DAC in this case is a digital analog converter. Yeah. Plug in your computer or your phone or whatever, and it gives you analog audio out that you plug into your headphone amplifier, which then goes into your headphones. Yeah, I mean, you could fit a DAC in a USB stick. Right, which they do, even with headphone and a headphone amp too, mm -hmm. all on a USB stick. So it's easy to implement that. But when you want uh, the real deal, the best of the best, it takes a bit of real estate. Uh, so because you're dealing with DACs are composed of not just the the D to A converter itself, but the analog section, the power supply section, and various iterations of this and that. And They're the pretty thing. complicated. So yeah, they'd be surprised what's in them. I mean, especially like the like this um, the 11 Audio here, the R2 R ladder DAC. It's got a pretty good sized board on it just full of resistors which create the ladder for the for the DAC it's a different kind of, kind of architecture versus the uh, your typical all-in-one chip so what does a DAC do how does it work I think most people are aware digital audio is stored more or less as a zero and a one state highs and lows right mm. and so you have coming into this DAC in digital form you have a voltage that varies between high and low which is ones and zeros. Which represents the ones and the zeros. And it's doing that tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of times Potentially a second, millions, yeah. yeah. Or millions in, in, in the higher rates. In some races. cases. Yeah, yeah, a second. It's a lot. So, yeah, that's mm -hmm. a pretty high-speed data chain. Mm -hmm. Right. But this thing's got to make into music. So there's a few issues with that. Um, the rate of change of this high and low isn't always perfect, so the edges could get a little squished. Sometimes when it goes up, it actually overshoots and you get a little noise and ringing. Sometimes when it goes down, it's a little irregular, there's slope to it, and it's very difficult for the deck to know exactly when this one and zero occurred, which it matters, because this is happening a lot. So if it's a little off, it's a little out of sync, there's troubles there. So the, it's the DAC's job to determine exactly when these events occur, and then to take them, decode it, figure out what it's supposed to be in analog form, and convert it to then the analog representation, which is more or less a smooth waveform, representative it, of the music. And ultimately take that analog waveform, buffer it somehow, so that it's at the proper voltage, so that it can output it to drive, say, an outside external amplifier right. or something else. So you have an analog section as well that's amplifying what's coming off the DAC because it's a smaller signal. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and sending it out to the real world through a yeah. set of interconnect cables, RCA, XLR, what have you. And, and this, you that's all happening in real time. Yeah. That's the pretty, problem. <laughs> yeah, very quickly. Yeah. At the speed of light, practically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these days it's actually very easy to make a DAC because it's so commonplace. You get tiny little chip DACs, dime a dozen. They're in so many devices now. You get them in little dongles and stuff like that. Yeah, They're USB built stick. into your phone. They're built yeah. into laptops, of course. It's already integrated in these devices. Yeah, it's a one-chip so, solution pretty much. Yeah, and they work pretty well. Yeah. Right. But they're not perfect. Nothing's perfect. Yeah, you need to surround that chipset with a lot of goodness to really to get the most. clean up its act. You know, power supplies. Power. Power is very good, clean power. It's very difficult to do very, very well, but pretty easy to do well enough. So that's the issue. Um, in the high end, since we care so much about the absolute best we could get, we have these big external boxes that we call DACs, right? And rather than using the integrated one in your phone, which is okay, but not perfect, we go through the trouble of having a very large, somewhat costly box external that tries to solve all the issues. Well, because, because digital is kind of like a step, it's step, 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 it, Every bit is put together to make a waveform, make analog. Uh, the harsh sound is kind of that step nature of it coming through. Mm. And we're trying with a, as you get up in the food chain of DAX, you're trying that that obviously should go away to a much higher level. And that's kind of what harshness is. It's kind of like think of it as like you know steps versus a slide. I guess would be mm. one way to describe it. Where the slide is smooth going down versus going down a set of stairs. Well, so be pure analog would be perfectly smooth. Yeah, ideally. usually you're dealing with mostly sine wave, yeah. sinusoidal waveforms, which are smooth, and then 
where where the uh, where digital conversion process there's there's some amount of noise mixed in there that well that's why ideally you'd run higher and higher resolutions to make the steps smaller so it gets closer and closer but it never gets to perfectly analog yeah and it usually works i mean that's kind of yeah. i think one of the reasons why we kind of like uh dsd files or higher res files versus lesser is because it i think it might actually make an easier job at the dac to be able to convert it it certainly mitigates in some yeah, a lot of the issues you know you're feeding it more information essentially yeah Think of a symbol crash, right? And, and we'll try to put some examples up somewhere, Ooh. but you think of a symbol crash, right? And it, there, that in itself seems harsh, right? You're right. listening to a symbol, particularly if you're standing in front of it, you know? But now you take that and you make it sound like there's a saw rubbing against it while it's That's hard to imagine. You know? And so now it's got, it sounds more like rather than yeah. you know? And that's, that's digital harshness. And, um, you know, there's different levels of it. And, and what, what helps with a lot of people with the lower end da side of DACs or like if you just have an integrated DAC is that if you're not running headphones or speakers that are particularly revealing, it kind of gets filtered out, which is a positive thing. You're not really hearing that. But as you step up the chain with in-ears or headphones or monitors or whatever, all of a sudden that DAC that sound seemed okay before uh, is annoying. Yeah, for the most part. This can be shocking to people that haven't really experienced it, but if you have low-end gear that's not particularly resolving, you could listen on a low-end DAC and you probably won't tell the difference. You could try 20 different DACs, you probably won't hear any difference. They'll probably all pretty much sound the same. Pretty mm -hmm. much the same. Because yeah. DACs, in a way, they can be kind of the most difficult thing to get right and also the least important until you get to the high end. You get to like mid-range and up, and then you kind of find a lot of times that the DAC is the thing that may make more of the change than the rest of the gear. Um, but in the low end, they all pretty much sound the same because it, usually your gear isn't resolving enough because the DACs are plenty good. We're talking about such a small difference here that it's not really perceivable until you get to the upper, upper range. But yeah, when you get there, absolutely, you could hear these it's things. It's that percentage game, you know, in high end it. Well, yeah. Everyone's after a few tenths of percent or so. And, uh, and and I think part of it is because people at that end of things focus on those things. Or, that is pretty, yeah. You know, yeah. It's pretty much everybody, they have everything already sorted out. Right. And now they're trying to find a DAC. This is what's left. They, they yeah. know, they've heard a lot, all, a lot of DACs. Yeah. And, yeah, it's like they don't like a lot of them now that they liked before because now the rest of the system's so good and now the DAC's a limiting factor. Yeah. Usually the DAC isn't the limiting factor for, like, the lower to mid-range, you know. They're good enough. That's kind of the evolution of a system in general. If you yeah. start at the bottom end of things and over time work your way up, you'll find you come full circle a few times. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> you know, true. Okay, now I got, you know, you do the DAC and then the amp or not just the DAC and a headphone and you get a better headphone. Now all of a sudden it doesn't sound good. And you might blame the new headphone, but it's really the DAC. So now you get a new DAC and it's kind of you keep going around and around to you as you're going up the ladder and, you know, getting, building a system. So, where some people are the opposite extreme. They can afford it, and uh, they step in and go, what do I need to buy? Yeah, that does <laughs> They happen. just get it, and they're done. That's the other way to handle it, too, you know? But um, Yeah, you see less of that, but yeah. Yeah. for the most part, it seems like people end up as the DAC being the last thing they upgrade because they kind of jumped up through the chain, and everything else got upgraded, and now they're starting to realize maybe the DAC is the limiting factor. Yeah. And how do you really know? That's trouble. Well, it is very trying. hard without trying or hearing, without it's understanding. Tough. It's kind of like almost the difference between uh, like a printer paper and sandpaper when viewed at a distance. You can't really see the difference, right? But you touch it, you can feel one's yeah. bumpy, one's rough, right. the other's smooth. You have to experience right? it. It's, it's really hard to tell unless you really experience it. But the easiest way to put it is a low-end DAC or a DAC that isn't quite as refined as a high-end one uh, will make your music sound harsher or a, a bit less enjoyable. And what that means kind of actually varies from person to person to some extent. But generally, to me at least, it's just as, as less enjoyable. It's um, everything seems more offensive if there's a, a sharp note, a cymbal hit or something like that, or a loud noise, it's a bit more bright or etching or stings a bit more than it would um, if it was smoother. Yeah, and you have to put this in context of the entire system, too. You know, the amplifier could be a similar, of a similar nature where it doesn't do bottom end so well. 
Uh, the first thing, especially in higher end DAX, uh, like ones that like actually are worth their their cost usually. Uh, you the first thing I notice is they have like a very black background. Everything's you know very separated. Everything's like you know pinpoint, which you don't really get in the low end. Everything's kind of more flat. It's like really yeah, quiet. The, the, yeah, quiet. Yeah, and you uh, put your headphone on or whatever, and you're like, like, I don't even hear anything. Yeah, right. You, the silence between the notes it, type it's thing. It's hard to get there. You need to be yeah. the, some of the best decks do that. You yeah, know? which. Like yeah, that's why a lot of people say a lot of decks sound the same in the lower end, and they they do for that. Like that, they all pretty much have the same kind of background sound until you get to the high high end, and then it's just black, yeah. pitch black. It's kind of like the first time you saw an OLED TV. Yeah, you're right. like, oh, like you got so used to seeing LCDs in gray, yeah. blacks. You never really you saw don't even black. You really black. see it, but until you hear that yeah. clean black background, it's like. And then what what that brings out is subtlety in detail because right. with that background noise dropped down gone now the tiniest little things become audible that were covered up or masked before by that background so, in the noise yeah so now all of a sudden all sounds pop more they sound more lively and actually the you you pick up on that your brain picks up on that and it sounds more real to you That's it, why sounds it sounds less artificial more 3d like yeah right which gives you more, more sense realistic. of space yeah, that tiny little details is what makes the thing sound real. Well, it's just like you know? with the OLED TVs. They they have a lot more pop to them yeah. due to the high contrast and everything. And you get the subtle black color changes and everything. So everything looks more real and more 3D. And it's funny, though. We got all this all this technology, right, getting up to we're at 8K now with TVs. But you still can't make a TV look like you're looking out a window. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> it's not there yet, you know, which is kind Nowhere of Nowhere near the dynamic range. Yeah, so. it's, yeah the brightness can't, can't do, do out, like outdoors. It's yeah. so bright. Can't do it. Can't do but it. we're going to get pretty close with audio. Really pretty close, you know. Yeah. A lot closer than some video. Of the, some of the, yeah, some of the, uh, some of the deck, upper and deck manufacturers, wow, they got a lot of R&D in it. And they've really, you know, really really clear the clarity i think is what really stuns you it's just it's just sounds so effortless yeah just natural yeah you know nothing's really sticking out it's not bothering you in any way you could play anything and uh so it gets to a pretty good level but uh you're talking they're still expensive i mean we're you know we see at that level we're usually above 10 grand for the deck which for some people are like jesus christ yeah. that's my car you know right and uh it's true it's that's the biggest issue with the deck. It makes them hard to really recommend until you're in the stratosphere with the other gear because there is no deck that we know of that's cheap and performs amazing. Yeah, right. If you're in that range, just get a low-cost one because there's not a big difference. Yeah. You're not going to perceive much of a difference. But you start getting to the high end, if, and all your other gear is super-duper high-end stuff, there's differences for sure. And to some people, it's a world of difference. Uh, a lot of times with especially worse recordings, a good DAC may have some fancy filters in it that makes it sound so much more lifelike, so much more realistic, and it makes your brain a bit more convinced that you're really there. Well, I think in particular it doesn't matter as much in the low end. You're looking for features and size, you know. Pretty Dis much. Like how big it is, displays, you know, mm -hmm. uh, inputs, outputs. Does it have XLRs? Does it not have XLRs? Um, does it run a battery or does right. it need to be plugged in? Right. Yeah, yeah they're all going to work yeah. very similar. It's right. unlikely you're going to hear a difference in the low-end stuff. But then once you get up to the higher end, then you actually usually lose features, and they only focus on being, like, you know, yeah. a DAC. They tend to have a shit ton of inputs right. at the high end. Yeah. I mean, you look at the backside of these things. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not just, yeah. like, one USB input, right? There's, like, 12 inputs. They're made yeah. to do it all, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and analog out. So, yeah, so, what what do you have for a source that's digital? I will convert yeah, that convert to audio for you. Yeah, anything to anything, yeah. connect, but just be a DAC. Right? Yeah. No other features. It normally is usually not preamps or anything. So I guess it depends what you're looking for uh, in the low end. You're, you're more feature-based, I'd yeah. say. But then once you get to the high end, yeah, you're looking for that enjoyment. It's right? all about the sound. Yeah, you're looking for, yeah, holographic black background detail monster, yeah. ideally. Yep. <laughs> Which, they're out there, but they're usually expensive. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. And when you can actually reach a point 
where you can make a DAC sound like a reel to reel, you're doing pretty good. Mm. <laughs> I'm talking a real good reel to reel, mm. you know, pure. like a hundred thousand dollar machine. Now the, we're talking the most pure of analog. Right? Yes, pure analog, <laughs> right off of tape. That's a beautiful thing. But uh, anyway, um, I think we've talked enough about this. Hopefully, mm. we didn't confuse people more than <laughs> more yeah. than explain it. <laughs> but uh, if we did, please mention in the comments what your what misunderstanding. We'll, yeah. we'll try to clarify it. But uh, anyway, thank you everybody for watching and take care of yourselves. <laughs>